you were saying that one of the most exciting things about working with Cabernet Sauvignon here is the ability to blend with different valleys. Right. Can you give us like a brief rundown of, of what different geological formations we have in Napa and how that impacts the resulting Cabernet Sauvignon? Okay. So, so Napa Valley is a long skinny valley. It's, you know, it has about half the known, the known described soil types of the world are represented in this one place. Because we have on the one side of the valley, you know, east side of the valley, we have a big volcanic fissure that opened up that entire mountain range. And on the west side of the valley, it's marine soils that got lifted up into those mountains. And so you have all, um, clays and high magnesium clays on one side and you have high potassium, different types of clays and rock on the other side. And then you have all these permutations within. And so, and climate wise, the mouth of the valley is much cooler than as you move up the valley further away from the San Francisco Bay and the Golden Gate where the cool air comes in, it gets progressively warmer. So you have all these different scenarios here and Cabernet responds differently in these different scenarios. And so the, the classic volcanic mountains on the east side, Howell Mountain, Pritchard Hill, Atlas Peak, big wines, muscular wines, you know, tons of tannin, tons of color, just power. Um, the eastern mountains and the south part of the east, sorry, the western mountains on the southern part, you have really bright acidity, real savory qualities. They also make big wines, but, but much edgier, more savory character on the Mayakamas, Mount Veter. Here on the valley floor, the alluvial fans tend to be the, um, a lot of finesse, very fine grained tannins, very aromatic, red fruited, but long. Um, you, you, and, and then you have, you know, the Calistoga can be very earthy, earth driven, because they, they ripen pretty fast. And it maintains these early earthy characters. As you get down into Oak Knoll Valley floor, much more in the cherry kind of character. And so what that lets you do is it, for a Napa, a Napa cab is to, you know, Coombsville, you have the black fruit and, and, um, and a lot of um, tannin density. And so you can, you can um, but still brightness and freshness in Coombsville because it's a cooler climate. And so all those volcanic soils. So you can pick from these different areas and put, craft them together and, and um, lay, make a layered sort of complete cab. And that's part of our tradition in Napa was, has always been these, um, I mean, we've had great single vineyard Cabernets as part of our tradition as well, but a lot of the Cabernets that really, um, I feel sort of put Napa on the map were blends of these different areas just layered together into these sort of complex, complete Cabernets. Super. So Napa might be quite small, but there's a heck of a lot of variety. Oh yeah. <laughs>